I have drove by these things and they have just been sitting here and nobody picking them up. <coughs> so, I'm going to pick them up. If nobody else wants them, I'll take them. I don't understand why they're still here. I really don't. Inside the non ferrous is in old red, and I'll grab that one when I get back. Um, yeah, this is our first drop off to the scrapyard this week because Dennis had to work a six day week and uh, wasn't able to get there on Tuesday like he normally does. But I was smart and brought my ladder this time because this truck is higher. Well, I'm not sure if this one is, I don't know. Anyway, I have trouble getting up in it so. Especially when it's wet and slippery that makes it even worse but yeah all I got is iron on this one um, second load got a bunch of stuff going inside he took apart three or four air conditioning units so he's got a bunch of copper uh, ACRs compressors and then uh, the metal uh, for those and uh, then a big load of scrap I think he was guessing over a thousand pounds he thought probably on that one so we'll obviously find out but uh, yeah gonna get in there get these trucks emptied so that he can go at it big time on Sunday so we'll catch up soon in the realm of road updates holy holy crap 
we have a new road in Middletown of all places. And this was so overdue. This road to the scrapyard was horrific. Absolutely horrific. And I never wondered why they did anything. Wondered why they wouldn't do anything about it given the fact that there's a school right here. And I thought, of all places, at least they would do it for the school. Obviously, they don't, you know, they're not worried about the rest of us, but this is the season of freshly paved roads, apparently, and holla freaking luya. Well, folks, I'm sitting at line at the scrapyard. As you can see, we're about, oh, I don't know, about six deep right now, and I've got folks behind me. Thought I'd get in early, and uh, that didn't work out so well. But I guess what they're trying to do is clear some room over there with the crane. As you can see, the crane is trying to clean out the uh, drop-off area. And hopefully, this means that we can do more than one truck at a time, because the last few trips, it's been one truck at a time. The pile has definitely gone down. So hopefully they're pushing some stuff back so we can get at least a couple trucks in it to drop off. That way it'll go a heck of a lot quicker. But yeah, right now we're just sitting and awaiting. Hopefully we'll be in soon. All right, well, we finally got back here. Settled in. Now we're gonna do some unloading.
for load number two. And I'm in Sammy Hagar. The first one was Old Red. I may have had those backwards. But uh, I'm in Sammy Hagar this time, and this is the big full load. Works with all the non-ferrous inside. Again, those AC units he took apart. So, hoping and somewhat expecting a, a decent load out of this one. Especially since we missed out on Tuesday, unfortunately. We're kind of trying to make this up in one day. So, we'll see how that goes. I got a question for y'all. I was just listening to WLW as I do to and fro. And uh, they were talking about Cincinnati, which we're in the greater Cincinnati area. We're in the northern suburbs, I guess you could say. Uh, is coming out um, with a Margaritaville Resort. Jimmy Buffett is very popular around here. They have what they call parrot heads. And he draws big crowds in the Cincinnati area. Has for many, many years. And apparently there is a Margaritaville Resort in New York. And the closest one is in uh, Nashville, they said. So there are, um, they've got one in the works to open in, I believe they said 26. And I was just wondering what you guys thought of something like that as a draw in the Cincinnati area. Obviously, we're not really known for our weather. I mean, it's it's not terrible. It's just typical this part of the country seasonal stuff. Um, <clears throat> up and down and all around. It can be decently cold. It can be snowy. It can be horrendously humid and hot in the summer. Uh, it's all over the place. Um, I like the change of the seasons. And don't get me wrong. I'm all for anything that draws jobs. This is supposed to bring a couple hundred jobs and uh, promotes the city of Cincinnati because I think Cincinnati is terrific. I think it's a great place for a uh, vast diversity of folks to live. The cost of living is reasonable in this area uh, by, you know, national standards anyway. And uh, so I, I, I hope it succeeds. I hope it's wonderful. I was just wondering what other people perhaps outside of the state of Ohio would think of that. I mean, is, is that a destination spot to come to Margaritaville in Cincinnati? I get Nashville. I get New York because they have other draws. And Cincinnati has a beautiful skyline. It definitely does. Um, I'm not in any way, shape, or form suggesting that Cincinnati is not a, a great place to come and visit, but I just don't know that we have the draws that other big cities do. I mean, it's not a big city. Um, so I'm real curious about that. What people think uh, outside of Ohio or the area would you come to Cincinnati to go to Margaritaville? And, and maybe Margaritaville, I don't know what it entails. So maybe it has enough in and of itself that it's, it's a draw. But just curious, guys. Heard it on the news. Thought it was interesting. I'll be at the scrapyard soon. Inside to drop off the non ferrous. Let's go have some fun. Ooh, it's loud. Good morning. Hi, how are you? How, how are you, you Mr. Bob? I had two of them waiting on me after work outside yesterday. They both whipped my ass. What? I had to go out there and make them leave. I told him I can't take the catalytic converter if I can't see through it. Right. The guy told me, he said, You're the stupidest. Another episode as as the scrapyard turns. 
apparently there's some threats of kicking butt.
guys. Have a great weekend. You too. All right. Well, I had a little lesson on the PC boards because there's confusion. And I, I mean, it per makes perfect sense to me what he's saying. It really does. Not that I know anything about these things, but I'm learning. And, you know, I was going by green and brown. And I think that's on me. I don't think Dennis did that. I think that's on me. I think I mixed them because I saw, okay, we got these. We'll just throw them together. And we had to bring them in anyway. It's just those brown ones don't pay diddly squat. I mean, they're 18 cents a pound. So, you know, you're not going to get rich on that unless you have a gazillion pounds. So, anyways, guys, let's go away. Okay, guys. Thanks. Oh, yep, there we're on. Okay. Uh, just clean out truck number two. Okay, he's got stuff strapped down pretty good. So, we're gonna... I can throw it over.
Somebody else. Good. We got her unloaded. Hmm, we're ready to work. Okay, let's way out. All right, let's do a quick weigh and pay. This first one was a quick load. Um, I waited long enough to get in to dump it, but it was a quick load when we dumped it. 660 pounds of unclean iron paying $66. That's $200 a net ton, that one. And then the next one we had some non-ferrous along with the iron. And we had 15 pounds on the um, auto batteries, one battery paying $1.95. The low grade PC boards, which you will see that he explained the difference. Uh, they're brown boards uh, where the pins and so forth are. I was going by the green side. I was wrong. Anyways, 11 pounds paying a uh, whopping 18 cents a pound paid $1.98. Um, six pounds on the mixed PC boards, which are the green ones. Those are the ones that pay $1.05 a pound paying $6.30. Uh, 113 pounds in the four compressors at 11 cents a pound, paying $12.43. The, um, there was number two, 11 pounds of number two copper at 285 a pound, paying $31.35. Think all of that came out of those uh, AC units. Nine pounds of copper aluminum radiators, ACRs, paying $1.55 a pound, paid $13.95. Again, I believe those came out of the AC units. Two pounds on the copper ends, 45 cents a pound, paid 90 cents. 23 pounds of irony copper. Um, it's radiators, aluminum, copper, irony. That's the one that he said there were some iron ends on them. 23 pounds at $1.30 a pound, paid $29.90. Let's see, we had 1,180 pounds of unclean iron on here at 200 a net ton, paid $118. And finally, 26 pounds on the number two insulated copper. I assume that that's all the wires at $1.05 a pound, paying $27.30 for a grand total on Sammy Hagar at $244.06. That puts the day between the two loads at $310. And I think that makes up for Tuesday. Dennis worked his behindy off to get all this stuff together. Um, I believe he has some more AC units waiting for him down south. 
So hopefully he'll be able to get to those at some point this weekend. And then we'll have our usual Sunday run. So he'll be back at the scrapyard on Tuesday. And we'll catch up soon. Have a great weekend, guys. Talk to you later. Asshole.